All right, welcome back to Bite Time. I'm Martin Falls with State Senator Mike Fazy, and he is District 20. Good to see you, Senator. Good to see you, Martin. I know it's not like you haven't been busy lately. It with... was, oh, I have to say it was a pretty rough week. <laughs> <laughs> Redistricting and closed primaries. and All right, so new governor. Just overall, tell, how was it? Just tell me, how did it well, go? Well, I mean, it was what we expected. I mean, going in to redistrict something that we had already did already and having to redo it because some judge mandates something uh, is tough because you, you basically we couldn't follow the rules to do what they wanted. Yeah. So ultimately, y'all created a second majority black congressional district and can you sort of walk us through it as a map, walk us through how it affects us? What does it do? Well, it totally takes away our congressional district for as uh, having Garrett Graves, who's brought tons of money to our, our area over the years. And and so, you know, basically I had to vote no on the map. Yeah. And was it a contentious uh, special session or well, were people well, sort of... It went off of what the judge really threw at y'all. Right? Well, and that's it. I mean, you know, when you draw a district, it has to be compact and it has to be like like kind, kind uh, of, of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says no gerrymandering. Well, all three of those were left out to create this second district because that's the only way you could create it. Yeah. And it, isn't that one of the toughest things that you could do as a senator or the reps is, Get in the redistricting. Isn't that tough? It's 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 very tough because you can never make everybody happy. It's right. it's impossible. Yeah. What was the sense? New governor, new vibes. Uh, what was it like? Well, I mean, me and Jeff go way back. Uh, we we get along great. Uh, the governor is is just trying to get things finished and and fixed up in an early stage so we can go on and and help our state get in better shape. Yeah. He's a ball of energy, isn't he? He is. He's ready to 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 roar and grow and 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 make things happen. Yeah. So if if you could encapsulate this redistricting, and for for the average person, it is confusing. It's confusing to me, and I've been doing this for a long time. But a lot of people don't realize the magnitude of politics that go into this, also. And you're right. You made a good point. When you lose some seniority in the area, that was a lot of money it, coming it, this way. It was a lot, and uh, and it's like we're going to have to start all over because we're we're in a new district, and uh, we you know it's going to be a whole new game. Mm -hmm. Who wins from this? I don't think anybody wins. I, I don't think I, I don't think it's a win for anybody because. I, I, it's 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 being forced upon and and not following the the true regulations of how you're supposed to redistrict because how many people in East Baton Rouge have anything common with people in Shreveport? Right, very true. You know, how does it affect us on the national level? I think it's setting a precedence uh, that we having a judge control what the legislature does, and I have a problem with that. I think the judges, you know, stay in their lane. We stay in ours. And uh, basically, they're taking control. Yeah. And what was the reason? You're right. There's normally a separation of powers when it comes to that. But it was mandated upon y'all. Was, it, was the, the court system exhausted for y'all to take that avenue? No. We we still had another we could made another move, but the governor wanted to get this out the way. We're wasting millions and millions of dollars on, on, on legal fees. And so he just wants to get it over with because it's going to come sooner or later. It's just that the state wasn't ready for it because the to implement it, you can't follow the rules. Yeah. And I see both sides, and you can't blame the governor. He wants a clean slate. He wants to move on. That's it. He and, wants and, to set his agenda yeah. and roll in this has been, how, how long have we been dealing with this? It seems like I've been dealing with it on the news desk for a long time. It's It's been a long time. I mean, like I said, everybody that lives in this state are so, so different in sets in different uh, areas that it's hard to congeal because all districts are supposed to be compact 
in like kind in that in that area and it's just you can't do it to be able to create those districts because everybody's so spread out and also we've had so many people move south over the years now the governor said the outcome of this special session is a win for the people of louisiana we took the pen out of the hand of a non-elected judge and placed it in the hands of the people that's that part's a win because if they would have drew it on their own, no telling what we would have got. So I will have to say and agree with him that it is the win that we were able to draw the district. Now, whether it's accepted or not, we'll wait and see. All right. So this sort of puts the rest. All of this about the judge, which has been in the news forever. And, you know, if you're on the NAACP side and all that, they're going to consider that. A big win. They've been trying to get this for a long time. And, and I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. I actually, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's just that it's so stretched out. It's just not like kind, you know, like I said, no, no matter what your race is, if you live in a total different area, it's hard. It's going to be hard for that congressman to make sure he keeps everybody happy in his district. I mean, look at our area. Yeah, we're split. We're stretched. Yeah, yeah. we're split. We go all the way west. Yeah. Yeah. And so it uh, takes a lot out of the equation. And, and to talk with Thibodeau, you got to go to a completely different one, which I'll be on the, on the news desk in a little while with. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Then we'll just talk regular Senator stuff. All right. We'll get away work. from the redistricting. <laughs> That's, That's it. And we'll see some of your goals. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Today's social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. Alford and Associates, for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. Parabon General Health Systems, modern technology and timeless caring. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. All right, we're back. We continue with District 20, uh, Senator Mike Fazy. And before we get to regular Senate stuff, like I told him we would, you know, the relationship we've always had with LaFouche, sister cities, is that in jeopardy now? Uh, well, I think as a whole, we'll work together locally. Um, and I think uh, hopefully uh, Scalise and, and Higgins can you know, come together and see that Higgins has got a big hole to fill for what Graves was doing, Garrett was doing for us. So uh, I, it's going to take a little while, but mm -hmm. I think locally we come together. We've always worked together. Uh, our our levies tie together. I mean, so it's just a matter of we're going to be still chasing the same money to keep our protection going. Yeah, and as long as on the state level, like you and, of course, you're a senior senator now and others, do the proper jobs. Y'all can sort of direct these people up and say, okay, this is what used to happen. That is a boundary, but it can still happen. That's it. It's just That's up it. to them yeah. to learn the boundaries and, yeah. and do that. What's some of the things you want to see as a senator get through this session? Well, what I'd like to see is, um, you know, we're going into a special session uh, again on the crime because crime is running rampant. Um, I'd like to see our school system get a, a lot more attention. Uh, the governor has, you know, vowed to do that. Um, you know, seeing and, and hearing a lot of things that's happening in the schools, they're having a hard time just getting kids on the right track, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's going to be a big thing. Another thing, a, a bill I was working on is what I want to do is see to stop our, our uh, universities graduating all of these young people and they leave in the state 
So one of the thoughts I had to bring and, and test and see if we could afford to do it, what I'd like to see is I would like to see that all of our uh, industries uh, in, in all of our uh, businesses have a right to, if they hire a, a graduating student from one of our universities for at least five years, that they'll be able to deduct, have a tax deduction on a portion of their salary, mm -hmm. and that way it help keep them here. Because if you if you live here once you, once you're out of out of college and and you're here for more, you know, five years or more, usually you have gotten married or already married, having children, got them in a place to start school, and uh, that way we can retain all of the loss we're getting from our higher education, just everybody leaving and going to Texas and everywhere else. You know, you make a great point. I was eating at a local establishment the other night, and in the little side room, I saw a bunch of doctors keep coming in, and, and so I was talking with them. They were having a meeting with some of the medical students currently in medical school, Shreveport, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, trying to get them to come back to Terrebonne Parish. Because a lot of them have gone to medical school and then they go other places. There was a concerted effort to get them back to Terrebonne Parish. And I'm sure LaFouche does the same thing. Pretty similar to what you're trying to do. Yeah, because like I said, if I can get a bill put together and come up with the right numbers, it would give those uh you know, all those businesses and, and agencies and, and everybody are a reason to keep people here mm -hmm. uh, instead of letting them go because we're spending all this money on higher ed, educating, doing some great education on, on all these young people, and they're just leaving. So yeah. all the talent is leaving, and we got to hold them here. You know, it's, they, they had the workforce people doing similar things. Uh, you could get credits or you could get tax deductions. It's pretty similar to what you're trying, but on a state level, that'd be another added kicker for somebody to be able to write off a good bit of the salary. Right. Yeah. Is it going to be tough sledding? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're honest about it. Yeah, hey, you know, do what we can do. But just think of the money we save, the more we keep here, you know. The yeah. more, the more the, you know, our population, if, if we don't watch it, we're going to lose another congressional district. What are some other things that you are sensing that are going to be coming up, maybe not from you, but from the state in general. I think we're going to. I think I think the governor wants to hit hard on DOTD. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been needing to be revamped for many years and get a whole new process on the way things get done, and uh, and and hopefully uh, we can open the doors up on it and 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 really get it fine tuned. And get some streets fixed, right? That's it. I mean, we're working on it, yeah. but it's taken. It takes a lot longer than most would, would would think. You know, just like the Berg Bridge, which I get calls regular. Yeah. I mean, five to six years when we when we replace the the I ten bridge across Lake Pontchartrain in eight mm -hmm. nine months. It, you know, why would it take? But five in fairness to, six to years? you and others, you're as almost good as a director of DOTD. If if they're ball of energy too, like the governor is. It could be done fast. Definitely. That's what you're banking on. That's right. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And news, I'm not going to steal anybody's thunder, but we'll have news on the CPRA and a lot of that coming this week or next week. And uh, I think we got some exciting things coming down the pipe. I think so. I think that, uh, you know, with with our Congress, uh, you know, in the House, with having the the Speaker of the House and the Majority Leader, no other state has had that opportunity any time in the country. So we need to you know, uphold and make sure we make make the best of it because uh, we should be able to get some good stuff going in in our state. And you know both pretty well. Oh yeah, very well. Keep that phone going. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Senator, good seeing you again. Okay. Good, good seeing you, Martin. Glad to be here. Good luck in all your projects. Okay. Dude. Thank you. All right. There you have it. Senator Mike Faze, a senior member. We're counting on him for a lot of things this year, and uh, I know he's going to keep that phone burning up. So we'll take a break. We'll come back. We have a lot more right here on Bayou Time.